Matthew Holt with a quick bite. I'm here with uh, Cynthia Perazzo. She is the head of insights and advisory at Avia. Um, so first, Cynthia, what's Avia? Avia is a professional services firm supporting health systems who are trying to transform using digital at scale. Right. So you have a membership of, uh, I don't know, dozens, is it hundreds or dozens of health systems who all pay a big chunk to be a member, member of Avia and get information about stuff. So uh, give me a rough the scale of what Avia is up to. So we are about uh, 60-ish health systems who are dedicated to transforming uh, using digital. We uh, work with uh, chief digital officers, chief uh, strategy officers, chief innovation officers, uh, and the C-suite to uh, do digital enterprise uh, strategies, pick out um, important capabilities for them to drive for their trans transformations. Right. So big picture question. Uh, health systems, they've been around a long time, they have lots of money, but uh, digital, di digital and transformation is something that they've been struggling with. How are they doing? Um, I give them a C minus right now. Um, okay. You know, and the only reason they get it, good credit is because I think they now get it. I think there is a real awareness that digital is going to be an important tool in uh, changing the operating models of health systems, which are too expensive, too heavy, too human dependent. Uh, so I think most health systems get that they need to be thinking about digital. Where they are falling short is thinking about how to change their strategic planning processes to incorporate digital into the plans. Uh, and the cultures are very risk averse. And uh, the, the friction between um, changing the operating model while you're operating the current uh, program, which is very facilities and people based, uh, is slowing them down. Yeah, I've noticed uh, even just in recent days, I was kidding with somebody uh, online about, oh, I noticed that you know, there's a lot of innovation going on in cranes and, uh, and building creation because there's still a lot of huge buildings going up and there's still a lot of that sort of focus on the big inpatient side. Um, I guess the question is there's now a lot of outside competition or putative competition. We have the Amazons, the Walmarts, you have CVS, you have Optum doing stuff, not to mention the scads of well-funded startups on the floor here at Vive. Um, how do you think it's going to shake out how are they going to? How are the big health systems going to do in terms of owning the primary care the way they have done the last twenty years? Well, if they recognize that the, the one of the incumbent advantages they have is the relationships and the trust of the communities and the patients that they serve, and they hold on to that fiercely, they have a fighting chance. Uh, a lot of the innovation that we see from the disruptors are from those who know and value those trusted relationships. I mean. Health systems in the past, the, the most important relationship has been with the physician, who is the referring base. Uh, and no, that's no longer the case. With increasing shoppable services and increasing uh, consumer demands and expectations, uh, health systems need to turn themselves to the consumers who actually have a high degree of trust in those health systems and hang on to them fiercely. So uh, some hope for, for health systems there. Obviously, it's going to be a very different world. Meanwhile, they've just gone through, still are going through, two years of complete you know, turbulence based on, on the pandemic. Um, what did that do to their digital strategies and how did they do to their overall operations? Because obviously there's a lot of chaos and a lot of pain and suffering, yeah. you know, while that's going on. So where do you think, what do you think the pandemic's meant for this? Well, I think um, on the optimistic side of the ledger, uh, many health systems were able to move with agility that they had never seen in themselves before. And so we're talking a lot about how do you get that back? Remember that May 2020 feeling <laughs> where you were just doing stuff? Uh, let's get that back. So, uh, you know, a lot of things happened in the 2020 time period. A lot of virtual visits. We're standing up virtual triage. We trained all of our parents and grandparents on how to make online appointments so they could get their COVID uh, vaccines and their COVID tests. So a lot has changed in terms of capabilities being out there. What we do find is that they are not optimized. A lot of, um, of the virtual visits are just, you know, basically replicating the clinic visit, which really doesn't take a full opportunity, uh, full advantage of the opportunity. So where we are right now is in a, a cycle of you know, kind of revisiting decisions and fixing operating models. That, uh, But I do think that the, we're not going back to all in-person, and the consumers are not going to stand for that. So I think the health systems who uh, rededicate themselves to the performance excellence that they bring to everything in the OR uh, and in supply chain, if they bring that performance excellence into their uh, virtual offerings with con that are direct to consumer, um, they can improve that and maintain that trust of those, those individuals. 
Well, that's uh, uh, optimistic. Now, let's just last, lastly talk about Arvi's role in this, right? Arvi's been around uh, on the way to be a de decade now. Yeah. Venture backed, but basically a professional services firm helping out. What do you think the future for a uh, professional services consulting company like yours is going to be? Well, I think it's two things. I think um, health systems and the leaders of health systems. Uh, you know, need to still work together. So our collaborative approach, I think, is here to stay. But I also think we are have the opportunity to uh, take some of our own medicine and digitize some of our services and get them out into broader hands. So we are investing in a marketplace to help health system leaders get access to the digital solutions they want more quickly um, with more insights. Fantastic. Well, I've been talking with Cynthia Preza. She is the EVP of Insights at uh, Arvia. Thanks for your time, Cynthia. Thank you.